When we think of GTA, the first few things that come to our minds are beatings, shootouts, strip clubs, a ton of funny situations, and of course, Catalina. Yeah, well, maybe I exaggerated a bit, actually. What I mean is that there aren't a lot of moments in GTA that would make us feel sad. Playing GTA is usually a good laugh, and actually, it perfectly makes sense. After all, if someone comes back home from school or work, they want to chill out, have some fun, not to distress themselves even further. However, that doesn't change the fact that we can find a few sad moments in the GTA games. Today, we're going to recall some of them. But don't worry, I don't think it'll make you cry or nothing. After all, GTA's meant to be a cabaret simulator, right? Now, I know you're blind, man, but you gotta see this. We'll skip some parts of the series such as GTA 1 or GTA 2, because, to put it mildly, there ain't exactly an abundance of sad moments in them. Trust me. Therefore, we'll start off with GTA 3, where we can find sad moments. However, it's difficult to look at them in this way because of the dude you can see on the screen right now. The thing is that Claude is a completely immoral, ruthless killer. If someone messes with him, then that guy's about to be mashed the fu- I mean, yeah, Claude will just hurt him a little bit. Just for the record, Claude is betrayed by Mrs. Annoying Ass with whom he worked for many years before. Then he is set up by Mafia Leone, and later also by the Jamaicans. It's pretty sad on its own, because Claude was always loyal to these organizations and never wanted to stab them in the back. Despite all this, Claude was so unlucky that whoever he worked for, they only wanted to exploit him to the limit and then cut off his cojones. And what was Claude's reaction every time? Well, he didn't really care about it. He would just send any rude boy that tried their luck with him on a magical train heading straight to the cemetery. Because of all that, the saddest moment in GTA 3 that we'll get to in a minute ain't even as sad as you'd expect. I'm talking about a mission, or rather just a cutscene called Ransom. Claude, having just done a task for Asuka in the mission called Sam returns to the construction site to have a chat with the local Yakuza leader. The conversation never happens though, as Claude finds Asuka dead. Furthermore, it turns out that Maria Latore, a truly beautiful lady that fell in love with Claude, has been kidnapped by Catalina. All that just so she can lure Claude into a trap and thief some Benjamins off him, which Claude would bring as a ransom. This whole situation is really sad. For real. Asuka, who was one of the few people who actually treated Claude right, got booked. Hence the only gang in the whole of Liberty City that didn't want to cap Claude, Yakuza, is going to be facing proper trouble. And on top of that, Loco Senorita holds Maria hostage. Although Claude seems to take just a slightly different point of view at this mess. This guy walks in there, takes the letter, and leaves. No questions asked, as if he was collecting his order at McDonald's or something. He didn't give two hoots about the fact that Asuka, someone who at one point helped him a lot, was lying dead on the floor, and that Maria, who was the only person at that time to actually care about Claude at all, is also either dead or in grave danger. So yeah, this would be the saddest moment in GTA 3 in my opinion. The only problem is that it's difficult to actually interpret it like that for the reasons mentioned a while ago. GTA Vice City isn't even better in that aspect. The reason is similar to GTA 3. You know what Tommy's like. He's not exactly the sensitive type. Plus, he's so charismatic that his confidence and determination rubs off on the player as well. So our emotional side is being turned off. Despite that, there is one moment in the game that may be quite overwhelming. Namely, the last mission in Vice City, in which we find out about Lance's betrayal. And yes, of course, Lance was a completely useless imbecile. Still, the majority of us seemed to kind of like him. He made us all laugh from time to time. Even Tommy didn't feel like chopping his head off after all these stunts he pulled off and kept giving him a chance after chance. And you can see in the scene in which this whole betrayal is exposed that even such a ruthless lunatic as Tommy simply felt sad about all this. Another protagonist that was sad was CJ when his baby mama, Catalina, broke a lamp in his whip. Nah, just kidding. CJ felt really sad during and after the Green Saber mission that definitely was the most shocking and depressing moment in the game's story. It gave a start to a series of sad events that happened sometime after it, so it's difficult to find a better candidate for the most depressing moment in the game. 
The Green Saber mission is stacked with adversities. Starting from Ryder's and Smoke's betrayal, who, as it turned out, sold CJ and his gang out for money, and ending with the baller's ambush set up for Sweet. CJ's late arrival to rescue his brother resulted in Sweet getting shot and being given life in prison. CJ is powerless to all of this and, along with his friends, is exiled from Los Santos. As if that wasn't enough, the GSF gang essentially has fallen apart. Families lose all their turfs. And the members, who somehow managed to get through this mess in one piece, began to cooperate with the ballers. For example, they were used as couriers to deliver money to Loco Syndicate that was the baller's supplier. All these events eventually lead CJ to killing Ryder and Big Smoke, the characters that played a vital role in CJ's life. Even though GTA San Andreas brought many sad moments, this isn't the best we can get in GTA in this aspect. For instance, it gets a lot more pessimistic in GTA Liberty City stories. The dark and depressing vibe of this game certainly adds to it as well. But when it comes to a specific moment, in my opinion, the saddest one in GTA Liberty City stories would be Toshiko Kassen's suicide. See, Toshiko, as we can find out from the dialogue between her and Mr. Cipriani, has once fallen in love with a certain samurai named Kazuki, for whom the marriage with Toshiko would mean moving up in the hierarchy of the Japanese criminal organization, the Yakuza. Toshiko truly loved her husband, though after some time, she realized that Kazuki didn't care about her whatsoever. He married her just so he can become Wakagashira of the Yakuza. Don't even ask me how it works, some Japanese traditions or something. Anyway, the point is that Toshiko's true feelings for Kazuki have been brutally abused in order to make some proper dollar. My husband is samurai, Mr. Tomo. He is very strong, but very, very bad. He only married me to become Makagashira in Liberty City. He has never loved me. He prefers the company of his men. Do you understand? If he finds out what you're doing, you know he's going to kill you. I do not care for life or death anymore. Only freedom. This resulted in Toshiko taking as her objective to destroy her husband, and not just merely kill him, but also to rip his whole gang apart. In order to do that, she hired Tony Cipriani, who executed every single point of her plan. Not for free, that is, of course. Following Kazuki's death, Toshiko had no motivation to live. Kazuki was the only thing that could make her happy. Even though he turned out to be a straight-up asshole that only cared about money and influence, Toshiko simply couldn't handle it. Vic Vance also couldn't handle what happened in the Mission Light My Pyre. That is the mission in which Louise dies. Someone who, in a way, was Vic's source of hope for a better future. Some may say that Vic actually shouldn't even have gone to help Louise in the first place. After all, Louise had many flaws and behaved stupidly in some cases. Additionally, she had a drug addiction that she was regularly indulging in with Lance, which obviously didn't reward her with enough XP points to reach a sufficient level that would make her good material for Vic's partner. In general, Louise is seen by many people as just a waste man. And yeah, she probably was a waste man. But we simply can't blame Vic for thinking otherwise. Vic, after he got involved in the criminal underworld thanks to corrupted Sergeant Martinez, was lost. Victor has always been a very empathetic, honest, and hardworking man with good morals. All of a sudden, he was supposed to enter a world in which none of the mentioned values were of any use. Vic entered a world in which you have to be a ruthless killer with no heart. And in this very dark tunnel, Vic noticed a light on the horizon. Louise was that light. Vic, probably not rightly, saw in Louise a sort of a diversion from all this mess he had to deal with on a daily basis. Despite the fact that the pair was regularly arguing, despite that Louise was who she was, Vic still hoped that she's the one that will help him become a happy man. And these are the reasons why there is so much negative emotion during the moment in which Vic powerlessly watches Louise die. Just as powerless was Nico Bellic during his journey in the Land of Opportunity, to which he dreamt of coming for such a long time. GTA 4, in the context of today's video's topic, exceeds our wildest expectations. Like, literally, every few missions we could find a solid candidate for today's list. For real. However, we witness the saddest moments at the very end of the game. If we decide to accept Jimmy Pegorino's offer and agree to work with Dimitri Raskoloff again, 
Only at the very start, we are being totally screwed by Dimitri, who stood Pegorino's buyer up and took the brown for himself. Hence, Nico was forced to get the money off the buyer in a rather not very diplomatic manner. All this so Pegorino isn't lost in the commission's eyes. On the other hand, actually, he already was. Either way, the consequence of this was that during the wedding of Nico's cousin Roman, Dimitri sent one of his errand boys whose only task was to kill Nico. Nico, fortunately for himself, quickly realized what's going on and handled the situation. However, he failed to protect everyone at the wedding. In the middle of this mess, Dimitri's hitman's gun suddenly goes off. The fired bullet very unfortunately hits Roman, who dies immediately. Even though Dimitri eventually got what he had coming to him, Nico lost anyway. His cousin is gone! The woman close to his heart doesn't want to date him anymore. Kate lost respect for Nico because he abandoned his values and agreed to work with his nemesis, just to make even more cash. In the end, Nico is left on his own, with a big bag of worthless money and emptiness in his heart, with no close friends or family. At the end of GTA The Lost and Damned, Johnny Klebitz must go through a similar situation as Nico. Long story short, throughout the whole story, Johnny's motorcycle club was facing various problems. First, their leader, Billy Gray, who preserved brotherhood, unity, and a whole bunch of other great values, turns out to be a straight jerk. Eventually, he gets himself locked up while trying to ambush his so-called brothers, Johnny and his friend Jim. Then, the club secretary, Brian, talks the majority of the club members over against Johnny. That leads to an outbreak of an internal dispute within the gang that brought deaths of many of the gang members, as well as the death of Brian himself. Later, during the Diamonds Affair, this time, Jim gets capped, who is very important to Johnny and his gang. The club is on the verge of collapsing. Then on top of everything else, Billy decides to snitch on Johnny and the loss to the feds. Hence, Klebitz, along with his brothers, who stuck by him to the very end, breaks into the prison and kills Billy. However, this chapter of the motorcycle gang story comes to a close by burning down the iconic clubhouse of the Lost. Thereby, it's the official dissolution of the Lost chapter in Liberty City, which is considered by many, probably rightly so, as nothing more than a failure. We also can't forget about the fact that the woman who Johnny loved, Ashley, has become a complete junkie. Johnny, in order to avoid the negative influence of Ashley's lifestyle on his life, decides to get her out of his mind for good. At least in theory, because as we know from GTA 5, things didn't run quite that way. In GTA The Ballad of Gay Tony, I managed to find literally nothing. Like actually, there are no sad moments in this DLC. The only thing that you could say is sad to some extent is drug-addicted Luis Lopez's boss, Tony Prince. It's hard to say that it's sad, however, as this character is presented throughout the game in a rather funny way. Plus, everything actually ends quite happily. The icing on the cake is GTA V. Even though it's considered as a humorous game, it doesn't lack sad moments. For instance, we could go with a moment in which Michael's family leaves him, or when Trevor finds out that his best friend at one point sold him out to the police for his own gain. However, in my opinion, without question, the most touching moment in GTA V is Ending B, in which Franklin chooses to kill Michael. During this ending, Rockstar tries their best to convince the player that he's made a wrong decision. The consequences of killing Michael are truly miserable. Trevor ceases contact with Franklin completely. Trust of Franklin's best homie Lamar also weakens after he hears what his friend's done. Franklin also receives threats from Amanda, Michael's wife. Jimmy calls him too, devastated by the loss of his dad. He suspects that it was Franklin who booked him and turns his back on him as well. And yeah, Michael wasn't exactly an angel. But if there was one person who had the right to kill him, that person was Trevor. We talked about this topic in one of my other videos that was released not that long ago, actually. If you're interested, it is displayed for you now on the left side of the screen. I'll appreciate all the reviews and your reflections in the comments, which will let me improve the quality of future videos. Meanwhile, I'm saying goodbye, see you soon, and take care.